Hello everyone, welcome to Chicken Stein Lives with Scott and Owen, episode, episode 3. And uh, Scott, you had a topic. Well, I thought it would be fun to do a topic about um, apocalyptic movies, um, you know, and uh, yeah, what fun. <laughs> 1990 Bronx Warrior. Oh, yes. With our buddy Trash. <laughs> <laughs> they all had awesome names. There was Trash, Ice. <laughs> they all had just like real short little names. <laughs> That's the best way to explain that movie. I'd say the Warriors yes. meets... <laughs> Hell's Angels. <laughs> Escape from New York. Yeah, actually, that's pretty much, that's pretty much all that movie is, is, <laughs> is the Warriors, and they're, like, you know, on motorbikes. Half the time they're on motorbikes, and the yeah. other half they're just kind of... I'd say the Warriors because of the strange-ass gangs they run into. Oh, yeah. I like the uh, tap-dancing baton <laughs> twirlers. <laughs> it's, like, it's like they tried to pick the most craziest, you know genre of entertainer and like put them into a gang it's a wonder they didn't have like neo-nazi mimes or dwarf twirling people with elephantitis or something like it's crazy they had the uh or the hockey guys they're on roller skates oh yeah 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 and then there was guys that were like dressed really nice like yeah. uh can't remember what they were called though ran by the hammer <laughs> <laughs> which was the guy's nickname that ran the guy. But then there was a guy in the movie named Hammer, which made right. no sense. <laughs> and did you notice it was like the dubbing of it was really bad? Yeah, it's uh, Italian, I believe. Yeah, and it there there was some parts where people weren't talking, but there was dialogue going on, and you're like, somebody off screen talking? Like, <laughs> who the hell is that? <laughs> I don't know, man. There was so much quotable lines in that movie. My personal favorite is... You have your gray matter in your butt. <laughs> and then at one point, someone says something and trash says, that's like poop out of someone's butt. I'm like, what? <laughs> and then remember the part where they're, where trash is like on the beach and it's like this, <laughs> it's like soft romantic kind of a, of a moment. You know, the waves are rolling in and he's just standing there looking all iconic with his hair blowing in the wind. And then it goes right back to, <laughs> Right back to the Bronx and stuff. And it's like, where the hell, like, where did they get to the beach? Where did the beach come in? <laughs> the movie was awesomely bad. Yes. And what was the, uh, what was the sequel called? I believe it's called Escape from the Bronx. Right. Yeah, I remember seeing that, but I don't remember anything about it. I can't imagine it was a big blockbuster, though. Not like the first one. <laughs> So you want to talk about just apocalyptic? Well, no, anything that kind of, uh, you know, gets into that genre. You know, I was just watching a Twilight Zone episode, actually, called A Shot and Arrow in the Air, which was from the first season in 1960. And it is actually classified as one of the first kind of apocalyptic TV shows. It, it, you know how Twilight Zone always kind of played on you, though. So you had these guys get shot into space and they crash land because something was wrong with the ship. So they're in the middle of nowhere, like it's a barren desert. Like they probably they thought it was like a meteor or something like that. One guy had died and another guy was dying, and then there was three guys that was alive. One of them was like really kind of a vicious guy. He didn't want the guy who was hurt drinking any water because they wanted to save the water for himself. And he ends up killing the other guys. So there's just him left. So he's got all the food and all the water. He finds out that he's on Earth. There's a part where there's a road and he sees a car going down it. And then there's a sign and they just crashed in the desert somewhere. So he had kind of killed these people for no good reason. <laughs> But it was kind of cool because it was, you know, you thought it was kind of um, just these guys alone in this desolate kind of world. But that was an interesting episode, I remember. Nice. I've never seen it. There's so many I don't want to talk about, though. You have Judge Dredd. Oh, Judge Dredd was, 
You know what? A lot of people hated that movie, but it was really good, I thought. I earned the law. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, Stallone wasn't the greatest, but I mean, <laughs> I mean, the movie was cool. Speaking of Stallone, Death Race 2000. Oh, another classic one. Demolition Man. Oh, I love Demolition Man. Remember when he's trying to wipe his butt and he <laughs> kept swearing so that the stuff would, the, the little tickets would come out so he could use for toilet paper? <laughs> wow, when I was younger, I was obsessed with that movie. I played it all the time. And I love that Sting did the soundtrack for it. That was awesome. But let's talk about Death Race 2000. All right. Not that shitty Death Race. <laughs> yeah. I got the Blu-ray of it, and it looks gorgeous. Oh, nice. Yeah. I don't have that movie, but I got to get it. I love the announcers. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're so almost Howard cosell <laughs> <laughs> When was the last time you saw that movie? Last year. Oh, nice. Though I'm still blanking on it. All I remember is uh, David Carradine's character, Frankenstein, would wa- he walked up to Stallone's co-pilot. He didn't say anything to her. And he's like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, it's already done. He just kind of walks away, and Stallone goes over and punches her in the face. <laughs> and, and then uh, Stallone tries to fight David Carradine in the parking lot and gets his ass whooped in like two seconds. <laughs> that was such a weird movie because it was... There was so that was like 1975. So there's a lot of movies like that at the time that were like ultra violent coming out during that time. You know, like Rollerball and all that kind of stuff. The first Rollerball. It's weird because like there was so much violence in that movie, but then at the same time they were trying to you know show that violence wasn't a good thing in the movie. Like it was, oh, this is so shocking. But then they were like, ah. They're running over freaking families that are having picnics and stuff. <laughs> and you're like, oh my god. But then they're like, oh, you know, it's, it's, this is crazy. You know, you should do this. I just remember I just remember that one part where they drove over that family having the picnic, and I was like, okay, this is this is my kind of movie. Like <laughs> you don't see that every day. And that was a fake family. Was it a fake family? Yeah, they had a fake baby with a bomb on it. Oh, okay, yeah. Have you ever seen District 9? District 9, yes. Yes. Do you classify that as an apocalyptic? I guess it is. That's... I'd call it dy- dystopia. Yeah. It's a dystopian kind of a world, isn't it? Everything's I mean, like, kinda... everything in the district is kind of apocalyptic. Yeah. But everything outside is just normal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it kind of fits with the... The Bronx Warrior, because it's just, they just gave up on that part of the city because there's so much crime. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that movie was awesome. The parkour guy and stuff. It was really different. Like, just the way that. I really didn't figure that that guy, like the main, I guess he's the main character, was going to turn into one of those things. <laughs> you know, how how he gets exposed to whatever it is and then all of a sudden like slowly he's uh was in it his hand and arm start changing yeah i i think i mixed two movies up <laughs> oh what were you ta- what was i talking about i think i said district 9 but i meant district b13 Dis- oh okay yeah, let's no. clarify district 9 yes has the alien yeah district B-13 has the parkour guy. Oh, okay. No, I haven't seen that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're just confusing everybody now. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. Now they have to look up two movies. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, I don't no, know. No, so what's B-13 about? It's like a really bad neighborhood in France, and they just wall it off. And oh, that's... Yeah, you sent me a link to that, I remember. Yeah, yeah. You sent me a link like a couple of months ago to that, and I watched the trailer, and it looked really good. Yeah, that's more of an action movie. Yeah. What about the classics like Battle of the uh, um, or Planet of the Apes, Mad Max? You've seen all those. Yeah. What do you What do you think about the Mad Max movies? The first one was more confusing than anything, I think. Yeah, it didn't really set the tone <laughs> the of sequel. like. Yeah. <laughs> There's no real apocalypse. There's just like a gang member who kind of looks like yeah. If I remember, he kind of looks like Raven, the wrestler. Yeah. 
And they just kind of, like, kill his wife and kid. And then in the second one... It's, like, full-blown... Yeah! Like, there's no... Like, there's only, like, scavengers on the Earth and stuff, and it's like, maybe Australia didn't look like that, and he moved somewhere. (laughs) And, you know, and then with the third one, it was even more... Well, no, I guess it wasn't further along in the wasteland, I guess. It was still kind of the same thing. You know, Tina Turner had her own little society, and I really liked that third one, too. And then I remember a couple of years ago they were saying that there was going to be another one, and I was so excited, man, but then it just never happened. I think there's still talks or still working on it. Yeah, I would love just one more, you know, like... No gives in them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which I wouldn't mind if he was in it, but... I don't think he's gonna be. Yeah. Did you ever see, I think, 2008 uh, Doomsday? 2008 Doomsday. It's called, it's from 2008. Oh, Doomsday. It had, like, on the cover, there was a chick and it was, like, red and stuff. Yeah, it was, like, such a mixed bag of, like, different movies. I think I did. Had the same kind of idea as District B13. They walled off this area because people were infected or whatever. Right. And then they realize there's a lot of people still alive, so obviously these people aren't infected, they're immune, so they send some people in there. And and that part's kind of mad maxious where they they got a mo you know, mohawks and they got melee weapons and like I was really into that part. They're cannibals. <laughs> and then like they escape from that and they get out in like the countryside where there's a castle and there's people riding around dressed as knights. Oh nice. It's like back in time and then she gets in a car and it's just confusing as hell it's like medieval apocalypse (laughs) a lot of people hate that movie but i thought it was all right i'll have to check that out sounds kind of interesting now did you see who did that rachel uh talalay's tank girl from 1995 had Lori petty in it did you see that it's been so long. I know I saw it, but I can't remember anything. <laughs> Ice T was in it. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty. That was pretty crazy. It was a lot like the comics, though. So that was cool. You know, that was the best part. I think that it was like the comics because it was such a a medium budget movie. You know, but uh, it was kind of fun. And then there's Kevin Costner's uh, Postman and Waterworld, which I I know people hate Kevin Costner. I'm not a big fan, but I love both those movies, man. I wouldn't say I hate Kevin Costner, but those movies weren't very good. I I liked them. I just, I liked that, I mean, Waterworld was like Mad Max, but on the ocean, (laughs) you know? And I like that he was able to go down and, you know, search these civilizations and stuff and come up with, uh, you know, these little knickknacks from from another world kind of and and postman was good because it was like so it was a little bit of american history kind of being retold again with uh you know turning out and how they were trying to get back into the swing of things and you had great moments like uh, tom petty was in it as himself and there's a part where kevin goes i remember you you were a rock star and he's like yeah it was a long time ago <laughs> <laughs> did you ever watch uh, book of eli I love that movie. And you know what? I didn't know for a long time through that movie he was blind. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't really hint on it until he was, like, captured. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Um, The end threw me off, but at the same time, I still liked it. I like any movie that's got Tom Waits in it. (laughs) And he was so good in that movie. I think my favorite part was the uh, house shootout. Oh, that was crazy. (laughs) <laughs> Although the camera was like looked like one shot. Yeah. Now I got a good one for you. Uh, have you seen? I'm trying to remember the guy's name. McGuire. Uh, Justin. No, not Justin McGuire. That was the other one. Jeffrey Falcon. It was called Six String Samurai. I've heard of it. I haven't seen it yet. 1992. It's like a guy. He looks. He looks just like Buddy Holly. And he's like a wandering rock star guy. And he's got a samurai sword taped to the back of his guitar. It looks like Buddy Holly meets Mad Max. It's just, and then he kind of partners up with this 
little silent kid who's this Justin McGuire kid. And it's just friggin' messed up, man. There's people in it that are like, there's a bowling team in it that's a bunch of enemies, and there's like rat mutants, and there's like um, this sitcom family. They're like cannibals. There's people who worship windmills. <laughs> like, it's just messed right up. I mean, it's kind of like, I mean, saying all that sounds exciting, but it's not. It's like freaking boring, but it's. <laughs> It's neat, though. It's just really different. Did you see The Road? Yes. And I read that book before I saw the movie. It is one of the only books that I have read, like still to this day, really transports you into that that story. I, I was physically exhausted by the time I, done, I got done reading that book because it... It makes you feel like you're actually walking on the road with those people. It is just so tiring and so drawn out, you know, and when they're sleeping in ditches and stuff and they're cold. It was just, oh. There's parts of, of the book that I thought were pure genius, and then there was parts that I I hated so much. But the part, the only parts that I hated was I hated his wife. Like, I hated her so much. I, I just had wished that he had stabbed her to death because she was such a... She was just... She didn't care about anybody but herself, you know? She was just such a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, Wally? You know what? I just watched Wally the other day for the first time. <laughs> My wife doesn't like movies that she thinks are going to be sad, so she's like, I'm not watching it. I'm like, no, it's not sad. Just watch it. She's like, I'm not watching it. So I, I watched the first part where, you know, he's kind of by himself and stuff, and then Evie showed up, and then she started watching it, and she was hooked after that. But Fat humans. <laughs> that was so sad, but it was such a, such a perfect commentary on the way the world's heading. <laughs> if there were chairs that people could have that you just kind of lay around and float around, people would love that. Kevin Smith says that's the kind of world he wants. <laughs> What about a cyborg? What do you think of that? Cyborg. Who's that? Oh, okay, Van yeah, Damme. I was going to say, the only one I remember <laughs> was Van Damme. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. counts, man. It's post I don't, I like I don't remember future. much about that movie, though. I just remember he was in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need to know. Here's one that I need to see, but I haven't. A Boy and His Dog. I have that movie. It's really good. It's It's a little slow, but it's... I mean, you can't get any better than Don Johnson and, and a telepathic dog, right? <laughs> he uses the dog to try to find women so that he can have sex with them. He, he's just totally obsessed with having sex with women in that movie. And he's always asking the dog, do you sense any women? He's like, no, I don't sense any women. Try again. <laughs> it's it's pretty, pretty crazy. And the ending is just, I won't tell you the ending is just nuts. Like, it's just nuts. How about 12 Monkeys? I have not seen 12 Monkeys. You're kidding! Nope. Oh, that's definitely one for the, the viewing list, man. I mean, whatever you may think of Bruce Willis, he's actually really good in this. I don't like Brad Pitt, because I'm not a Brad Pitt fan, but he was actually really good as a crazy guy. <laughs> uh, one of your favorites, Zardoz. Oh, Zardoz! <laughs> The pe the penis is evil. Yeah, <laughs> the gun is good. Yes. Oh man, I I like that movie for so many reasons. Anytime <laughs> I see a giant rock head floating through the air, I'm sold. But then if you can get in that head, and it's filled with fruits and vegetables, I mean that statement alone. They feed the head fruits and vegetables because it's their god. And, and, you know, the main character gets in the head and he's floating and he gets back into the dimension or, or the place where that head comes from and he sees what the world is like there and that they're all just being kind of, you know, manipulated. But, like, Sean Connery is so good in that, man. And he's so hairy. <laughs> I mean, he looks like a little monkey almost. How about, how about Logan's Run? It sounds familiar, but... That's where whenever you turn, uh, I think the age is 30, you have to go to Carousel, and you're in there. The crystal glow starts like glowing red on your hand, so they know you're that age. And then you go in, and you have a chance of being renewed, which is fake. I mean, everybody dies because you blow up, but 
being renewed means you get to live again or whatever. And so the main character is a Sandman. He's one of the guys that goes in and shoots people who run who don't want to go to Carousel. And he ends up running himself and uh, finds, like, Sanctuary. Just has these little adventures kind of on the way. And But they made a TV show out of it as well. Uh, which I had never seen, and they just came out with it this year, and I picked it up, and it's it is almost better than the movie, which is really rare because it doesn't usually happen that way. Pretty good though. Check it out. Yeah. How about this true classic? Hell comes to Frog Town. <laughs> I was wondering if that was going to come up. You know what? Roddy Piper's in that, right? Yeah. So. I think I've seen like maybe 10 or 15 minutes of that, but I've never seen that all the way through. <laughs> he just wants to have sex in it too, I believe. <laughs> He's like the only man alive or something like that. Oh, okay. But they made two sequels. Oh, you're kidding. We got Return to Frogtown, which is Robert Sadar as the star. Oh, jeez. I don't know if he's in the other one. Max Hell, Frog Warrior. No. Nope. <laughs> That one's made by this guy that, I don't know, he just has lots of money and he makes really shitty movies starring himself. Mm. <laughs> They're atrocious. And they always have, like, porn stars. And forget oh, that one. That one doesn't exist. How about ones that were, like, actually based upon, like, nuclear war? There was uh, a movie called The Day After, which we watched, actually, in high school, they showed us. There was one called Threads. And I remember another one called Testament. And they were all about... Like, basically, nukes going off, and then how people... It always ended the same way. Everybody was friggin' dying of radiation poisoning, and they're puking blood, and... Those movies are so depressing. I have the day after, and every time I watch it, I'm just... By the time it's over, I just sit there going, Oh, man, I, I hope if anything like that ever really does happen, the bomb hits, like, my house. Because I don't want to walk around, and my hair's falling out, and I'm barfing my eyeballs out or something, like... This is horrible. No, I haven't seen any of those. There was also a really cool movie. I'm I'm trying to find it still to this day. I've only seen it once. I had the soundtrack to it. The soundtrack haunted me because the music in it, other than the ones done by like actual bands, the instrumental music was just so freaky. It's from 1986, and it was called When the Wind Blows. It was animated. I have the graphic novel. It's by Raymond Briggs. And it was just like this little old British man and his wife, and a nuclear war happens. They survive, and it's just them trying to live a normal life in Britain. And it is probably one of the saddest things I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, they're dying of radiation poisoning, obviously. And through the animation, you can see them getting thinner and their eyes are getting black. They're trying to, you know, keep that stiff upper lip kind of thing. And he says, you know, well, I, I read in the, you know, magazine that we should put these cardboard bags over our heads. I, I don't know why. So they end up doing that at the end, like they put these bags over themselves, and obviously it's so when they die, the people that come and collect the bodies got them in bags. And it was the saddest thing ever. You know, here's this little old man and his wife who are pretty much, she had died, I think, and he was dying, and they put these bags over them, and they just lay down in the corner of the house. And I was just like, I remember, I <laughs> honestly, I remember bawling my eyes out watching this movie and i was just like oh my god this is so horrible <laughs> it was good but it was so sad that was our sad moment <laughs> sounds good yeah here's one on my list i haven't seen yet though but i want to see called uh cherry 2000 <laughs> <laughs> huh. i was just taking a drink when you said that i remember watching that movie I was in high school, man. My buddy, Cam, he was into a lot of these kind of crazy movies, too. That movie was, like, friggin'... There was nothing like that, man. Like, it was like... It was like Mad Max, but a woman, you know, almost. Like, it was just crazy. And she... Like, she had red hair. They had some really nice cars in it and stuff. But it was just, like, this crazy friggin' race across the the apocalyptic wasteland or whatever but then it had all this awesome like you know sexy chicks in it and stuff <laughs> <laughs> oh man it says his android circuits while he's making out with it on a wet kitchen floor 
yeah, right. The repairman right. tells him it's irreplaceable. And finding a new one will be difficult because it was a limited edition. <laughs> so he travels out to find another Cherry 2000. Right, right. Oh, <laughs> man. It's been a while since I've seen that one. One of the only scenes about that movie I remember was from a wrecking yard, one of those big magnets, if it's one of those or whatever, but they got the car hanging by the bumper, the front bumper way up in the air, and the chick is trying to, like, get out of the car without getting killed, and, you know, and she's, like, so sexy looking. <laughs> That's all I remember. <laughs> oh, man. Speaking of, I remember back when I was talking about Rollerball. Did you ever see Rollerball? It's been a while, and I remember the sequel probably more, which is kind of sad. Yeah. Not the, the remake or whatever. Yeah, the remake. Yeah, it was sad. <laughs> <laughs> it was sad. Remember Solar Babies? We were talking about that, weren't we? Yeah, because I bought the DVD and I still haven't watched it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome that you have that, man. I'm still looking for that movie. It's one of my favorite Jamie Gertz movies. I, I think she's like so pretty, you know, from Lost Boys. <laughs> I loved her in that. And then seeing that somewhere and I was like, oh, it's got Jamie Gertz in it. So I got it and it was like, this is kind of shitty. <laughs> <laughs> Does a uh, soldier count with Kurt fucking Russell? <laughs> yeah, soldier was awesome. <laughs> Kurt Russell. Yeah, I love Kurt Russell, man. He's awesome. <laughs> he's like the quintessential you know there's quintessential apocalyptic guys you know obviously you know mel gibson for mad max and stuff but like kurt russell's one of them just because of his escape from new york movies you know and yeah, which we didn't even talk about yeah and those were really good movies my wife likes that movie and it was a horrible movie <laughs> new york better than la oh yeah uh, la was poopy but it had Bruce Campbell on it as a crazy doctor. <laughs> yeah, right. They have screamers listed. I don't know. I, I guess. Again, I actually like that movie, too. Okay, now I'm talking about the first one. They did, like, what, 20 friggin' screamer movies? No. There's one sequel, and it sucked. Oh, I thought there was a bunch of them. Not that I know of. Oh. Well, the first, the first one was really good. Yeah, with Robocop. Yeah. And it had, remember that little kid who was a screamer, but you didn't know... Yeah. That was freaky, man. I liked it, too. And they obviously set up for a sequel because of the teddy bear. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Then you get the running man. Running man, yeah. That's a good one. It was awesome. Good premise, too. Do you know what that was from originally? Stephen King novel. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> it's quiz time. <laughs> I think the best part about it was the, the host. Yeah, he was... What the heck was his deal, man? Well, I can't remember his name. Richard Dawson, right? Yeah. He hosted a bunch of... He used to hold Family Feud and kiss all the women. Oh, yeah. And he was on, like, Match <laughs> Game and... The one where they try to figure out... Blank. She put a blank in her blank. Yeah, that was Match Game. Yeah. <laughs> blank in the blank. <laughs> <sighs> Wife's laughing. She loved that show. <laughs> She bends over and does blank, and they're like, says the most ridiculous stuff. Yeah. Picks up pennies? Uh, no. Starts her car? <laughs> the funniest thing I ever heard, though, man, was they had one of those newlywed games, and they asked the chick, uh, where's the weirdest place that you ever had sex? I heard that. Man. And they all come back, you know, on the panel and stuff, and they asked her that, and she's like, in the butt? <laughs> and her husband's like, I mean, everybody just goes insane, right? Like, they obviously didn't air that one, but they showed it in the bloopers. And he's looking at her like, he's like, what? why are you saying that? Like, it was just so funny. He's like, oh, I didn't understand the question. It's like, yeah, it's just time to go home, you know. <laughs> well, that's the strangest place for her, I guess. <laughs> Not in an elevator. <laughs> Uh, it's classic. Have you seen? And I'm gonna, th I'm gonna say probably that you have, but I don't know because you know I would say that half of the people I ask this have not seen it, nor have they read the book, and even a percentage have never even heard of it, which just shocks me to no end. Have you seen or read 1984 by George Orwell? I think I've seen the movie. Is there a movie? Yeah, it's out of <laughs> it's out of print now. I cannot find it. 
If anybody has a copy of this that would like to give it to me, please. I think I'm probably confusing it with something else, though. It's a dystopian world where you think that you are at war with another nation. The reality of it is, I don't think that they ever were. The, the government is just controlling everybody. You know, Big Brother's watching. The, every every house has like a view screen where they can always see you, no matter what. It's like a communist country. It's you can't do anything that you want. You know, you can't get a piece of paper with a pencil and sit and write your thoughts or anything because that's you know it's against the law. It's just this guy who ends up finding a chick and they kind of hook up. They go to a shop in town. They are, they basically they want to be able to have sex with each other because that's outlawed too. And the old guy who owns the shop says, "Well, I I have a room upstairs with no view screen, so why don't you go ahead up there?" And so they do that for a couple of weeks or whatever. But then you find out that there is a view screen up there, and the thought police, you know, find them and put them through horrendous tortures and just you feel like you're going insane when you're watching the movie because it's just it's just crazy you know and they want to assimilate him back into the culture they, they're gonna kill him but they want him to be assimilated back into their culture before they kill him so it's almost like they brainwash him back into being brainwashed again and then they put a bullet in his head kind of thing and you're just like this is crazy but it's a good movie okay i was thinking of a different movie then I was thinking of Class of 1984. Oh, I saw that. <laughs> yeah. Which has nothing to do with the book. Just bad students. That movie reminded me of like those you know, Toxic Avenger movies, kind of almost. They were like really like slapsticky. <laughs> <laughs> I just cheered when the teacher just started killing them all off at the end. <laughs> what about a movie that's, I guess it's split on how people like it. The Mike Judd movie, Idiocracy. Okay, I've never even heard of that. No? No. It's like a guy gets frozen and he wakes up in the, you know, way in the future. Like everyone is just completely moronic. They're just dumb. And he wasn't that smart to begin with. That's why he was picked because he's in the military. He was picked to do this experiment because he wasn't that intelligent. And then he ends up being the smartest guy in the world when he wakes up. And it's just like fast food restaurants everywhere. They don't know how to grow crops because they're just spraying it <laughs> with like Gatorade, basically. <laughs> and they just they sit around and watch porn. Like everyone's just an idiot. Like since he doesn't have like a little barcode or whatever, they send him to jail and he just tells the guy he's not supposed to be there. And they're like, okay. <laughs> nice. And then he becomes president because he's smart. It's like, put water on it. And then they try to kill him because it's like, it's not working. Like, it doesn't, it takes more than like a day. Oh, man. They put him like in an arena where a guy tries to kill him with a monster truck. Girly Matt realizes the plants are actually growing and she films it and they're like, ooh. Oh, man. That sounds hilarious. I'm going to have to check that out. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Did you see Night of the Comet? Yes. <laughs> That's a classic, man. I love that movie. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could count like Every zombie movie is popular. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> or the non-zombie infected movies, like Twenty Eight Days Later. Oh, I tell you, man, the oh, the first time I seen that movie, I was in a comic shop and the guy was playing it. And you know, I'm looking around for comics and I'm watching this out of the corner of my eye, and there's just like one guy in London walking around. I'm like, this looks so cool. And then he goes into this church and buddy behind the counter goes, here's where it gets really good. What's going on, man? And then all of a sudden, these all these guys start freaking out and screaming and chasing him. I'm like, what the heck? What the heck kind of movie is this? Those aren't zombies. <laughs> He's like, oh, it's worse. It's worse. There's a sickness. <laughs> so I got my uh, G-Force comics and I was gone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to remember more. I have one for you. Well, it's not really... It's Blade Runner. Oh, Blade Runners. Blade Runner's on my top ten list of all greatest movies of all time. I, I love that movie. And I got the box set that's got the five different versions and everything. <laughs> you ready for this? Yeah. Never seen it. You've never seen Blade Runner. 
I have a copy somewhere around here. But I haven't seen it. Are you kidding me? No. You're one of those guys that's never <laughs> seen Jaws. No, nah, I've seen Jaws. Okay. <laughs> Scared the say. shit out of me as a kid. That was a scary movie, man. <laughs> I didn't want to go in a pool after that. You know what? I, I can't wait for you to watch Blade Runner. You'll have to watch it and let me know what you think. Because from my experience, people have been divided right down the middle with that movie. People either, they get it. The people that get it like it. And then there's people that just don't, they don't like it. And I think it's because... I mean, it's a, it's like a, a heavy sci-fi novel adaptation, right? So there's a lot of like subliminal stuff in that movie. And there's stuff about replicants in it that, you know, I had a buddy who was just like a friggin' dullard. I mean, this guy's a dump truck. And he'd watch something and go like, I don't, I don't get it. And I'm like, well, you know, they're, they're androids. He's like, that's an android. And it's like, oh, you know, like he just... Any kind of sci-fi was, he just couldn't understand it. But then he, this is a kind of guy that he could watch a horror movie and somebody would get their head ripped off and he'd be like, I don't understand. Why did that guy get his head ripped off? You know what I mean? It's like, oh, (laughs) see, you shouldn't, you need to not watch movies and do more drugs. (laughs) I don't know where I was going with that. But Blade Runner is like so... Oh, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like science fiction, but like with caviar, you know? It's like, it's sophisticated science fiction, but then there's this dirty, dirty edge to it. I just, I love it so much. I'm going to watch it today, I think, again, just because we talked about it. (laughs) (laughs) Now, I know there's a movie, this is a movie that you've seen. If you've not seen this, I'll send you five dollars in the mail, and don't say you haven't just because you need five bucks. So, Red Dawn. Yes. <laughs> Did you like Red Dawn? I it's a guilty pleasure. Yes. Oh, see, I knew it. You're perfect because <laughs> that movie was so good, and you know what? It had action in it, and it was sad. The and, Patrick Swayze. Yeah, and all those like Jennifer Grey was in it. Before she was the dirty dancing little hose bag, and which was also Patrick Swayze. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I never even thought about that. You're right. Oh my god, they were in a movie before that. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. I heard rumors they didn't like each other. I don't think the Greys liked much of anybody. <laughs> they were a little stuck upish. I think. Here's your favorite film of all time. I know it. Tell me. Battlefield Earth. Oh, never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen clips on YouTube of John Travolta with that thing up his nose, and I'm like, I can't watch this. This is ridiculous. Uh, I don't know if I'd... I guess it's dystopia or whatever, but uh, they live. Another Roddy Piper. You know what? <laughs> I really liked that movie. I read the book when it first came out, and then they made the movie, and I was so excited to watch the movie, and it was a lot like the book, except... I mean, Roddy was kind of... Awesome. Yeah, okay, sorry. But his <laughs> a- his acting is just, like, crazy. But it was a good movie. The glasses, man, the glasses, <laughs> you could see them. <laughs> I love the... That's probably one of the only movies where it kind of had a realistic fight. Where, like, they just punched <laughs> each other, and then they were just, like, tired after, like, five minutes. They're, like, like kicking the crap out of each other, and they're, like... <gasps> <gasps> Like, that's great. Usually they're like, you know, 20 minutes boxing match and they're both they're not fine. Even sweating. <laughs> that's right. I forgot about that. They just kicked the crap out of each other and they were just like, just heaving their guts out. Well, there's some uh, Vin Diesel movies we haven't touched on. Ah, uh, yes, yes. You have Chronicles of Riddick. Yes. Which is dystopia. Yes. And government social. As they would call it, uh, Babylon AD, which sucked. But hey, he did a backflip on a snowmobile and shot people. I was so looking forward to that movie too. I got to tell you the truth, and that came out, and I was like, "Oh, this really sucks," and I don't, I don't like that it sucks because I wanted it to not suck, but it sucked. The beginning, were you at least like me? Like the beginning, he's walking down the street, and that rap song's playing. Yeah, and I'm just like, "Fuck yeah." <laughs> And then you're just like, what? But that also has the guy from uh, District B13, the parkour guy. He's in it as tattooed parkour guy. I'm like, they didn't give him a name. <laughs> nice. <laughs> There's my credits. There it is. 
<laughs> Apparently he invented parkour, whatever that means. Maybe just put a name on it. Parkour Pete. <laughs> now, let's talk about, for a minute, the I Am Legend, uh, but let's go all the way back. So the very first movie was called Last Man on Earth with Vincent Price. Have you seen that? It's been a long time, but yes. Okay, I'm very glad that you've seen that, because out of all of the adaptations... I have to admit that the that is my favorite, the original. And then we had The Omega Man with Charlton Heston, mm-hmm. which is a damn fine movie. My mother-in-law bought that for me. Is that it? No, I was just thinking. <laughs> so, <laughs> my train of thought was gone. I, uh, my mother-in-law bought that for me for Christmas. Oh, this looks really cool. And she's like, oh, you have no idea. My, my mother-in-law is so freaking awesome, man, because she loves sci-fi and comic book stuff and you know my wife sometimes won't watch any of that with me but i just call my mom-in-law over and she'll like i'm like hey you want to watch this post-apocalyptic movie she's like yeah but i watched it and i'm like this is uh last man on earth and she said yeah it's a remake so then they did another one in the 90s and i watched five minutes of it it was so bad and um then they did i am legend with uh, which is the original name, actually, is I Am Legend, with uh, Will Smith. Did you like it? No. No? What? Okay, let me ask you this. What did you not like about it? Because I'm interested in knowing. The monsters. Okay. It's all shitty CGI. You know, originally, it was more like uh, a Mega Man, where they were just kind of turning into these vampire kind of people. It was a little more closer to that movie. And did you... Will Smith just didn't seem to fit that role. I don't know. He just seemed bored. (laughs) It was just another movie. (laughs) I'm just trying to get this done. Put it in the can so I can get some cabbage. As soon as I saw that CGI deer, I'm like, No! No! I'm out. (laughs) What's it even doing in New York? But you're not a huge fan of CGI anyways, are you? It's done, right? Uh, yeah, so I know, but if you can... Going use... back to, what, District 9? Yeah. It's awesome CG. But if you, what I'm saying is, you're one of those guys that if you can use a person instead of that, you would opt for using an actor, wouldn't you? Yes. Yeah, see, and I agree too. I think that they use CGI too much. It's like you couldn't get a guy and paint him up like a white vampire. Yeah. Give the guy some money, you know? <laughs> this I don't know if this would even classify. Have you seen The Island of Dr. Moreau? A long time ago. I've seen a couple of different ver- uh, versions. I still haven't seen City of Lost Souls, which is like, I think, the original one. Or, sorry, Island of Lost Souls. Or Island of the, the Damned. I can't remember now what it's called. Anyways, I saw the one that they did with Val Kilmer, and I love the story. The, the director hated him so much because he's such a hard guy to, to work with. He fired him halfway through the movie and they had to fill his parts in with like other stuff. And it was just hilarious to read about how much this guy hated Val Kilmer. <laughs> Here's one listed. Gamer. Okay. It's called Gamer. Gamer? Gamer. Oh. I guess it's considered a social dystopia. I thought it sucked. It's basically... A gaming tournament where real people control criminals, and they're playing a shooter. Yeah. I didn't see it, but I remember watching the trailer for that. It was done while people did Crank and Crank 2 and the new Ghost Rider. Oh. But, like, their style is shaky camera fast cuts, which I hate. I I hate that, man. If I want to watch (laughs) that, I'd I'd do one myself and run out in the freaking field or something. Run, monsters! What about animation? What about um, apocalyptic animation? This one I'm trying to remember. It's it's like a Christmas story, if I remember right. And it's like, uh, I think it's mice, and they're telling the story about why there's no more humans. Oh my god, that sounds incredible. What is it? I can't remember. Oh, please remember. I want to watch that so bad now. <laughs> See, that's the kind of thing. Everything works, man. A, it's animation. B, it's mice. It's It's like... The animals are the main characters, and it's apocalyptic. Like, those three things are perfect! I'll have to try to find, remember it. 
Man, that sounds awesome. I love movies where the animals are the main characters, though. Like, I did you see Watership Down with the rabbits? No. I think I found it. Okay, let me get a pen, because I'm writing it down. It's squirrels, though. Oh. Okay, <laughs> that's our... You're like, I'm out. Ah, squirrels, man. What's it called? A Piece on Earth from 1939. It's on YouTube. 1939? Yep. Holy crap. Peace on Earth is a one reel 1939 Metro cartoon short directed by Hugh Harmon about a post apocalyptic world populated only by animals. Two young squirrels ask their grandfather on Christmas Eve, who are the men? Peace on Earth, goodwill the men, which is the lyric from the song. Godfather Squirrel tells them the human race. Oh my god, man. I'm, I am watching that today at some point, too. That and Blade Runner. It's on YouTube. It's about oh, nice. nine minutes long. Oh, it's just a short? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought it was a movie. No. Okay, well, seriously, that's uh, that's awesome, man. I love that kind of stuff. Love it! Here's another one I've had on my list for a long time. Uh, Children of Men. You know what? I started reading the book, and I thought, no, I don't want to read it, because it was, like, really... Round, it was it was written in such a roundabout way. It just I lost it. I, mean, I lost interest twice when I was reading it. So I knew the movie was out. I'm one of those guys that doesn't have a problem with that dude. What's his name? Clive Owen. Clive Owen. Yeah. Um, a lot of people don't like him, but I don't have a problem with him. So How dare they? Him. Not like Owen. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Anyways. Crazy. And it was it was it was a movie that's hard to categorize because it didn't seem like an apocalyptic movie at all. But then it did. It sure didn't seem like everything was like normal either. I didn't mind it though. It was it was okay. It was a different movie. Like I I got done watching it and thought that was better than I thought it was going to be. But it was really hard to. I don't know. That would have been that would have been a hard one to try to pigeonhole into a, a genre because it wasn't. It definitely wasn't. Oh, maybe it could be like we were talking about a dystopian kind of a of a government. Maybe it was kind of like that. I guess it's it's worth watching. Any closing thoughts? So many freaking movies. we could do like ten episodes just of of this. This was this was this was good. Cause yeah, we just kind of name movies. <laughs> yeah, but like we talked one. about and we've seen a lot though, which is really we didn't even hit on like a video game Fallout. Oh yeah, Fallout's classic. Or the disaster movies, you know, because they're kind of kind of categorized, maybe. War of the Worlds and all that kind of stuff. Doctor Who, you know, like some of that was end of the world stuff. But I don't know. I guess I guess if I was gonna go out like a, a specific movie, one of the things I I remember the most had to be the second Mad Max, the Road Warrior. When I was in grade seven, we had very cool teachers. I was in Hamilton, and my music teacher brought in the video cassette of that, and she let the grade seven and eight classes watch Road Warrior in the auditorium. And I was like, this is the most incredible thing I have ever seen in my life. <laughs> I was just, I was so affected. You know, she became my favorite teacher after that, too. But I remember thinking, like, I've never seen a movie where it was after the world was gone kind of thing. And that catapulted me to, you know, that kind of cinema. The end of the world cinema. I'd say, if you haven't watched Death Race 2000, shame on you. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> shame on you. And then when you're done watching it, shame on you for watching it. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna send it off. Thanks. And make sure you're here next week when we will have famous, famous guests. Hopefully. Or maybe, maybe one. <laughs> <laughs> we, might, we might talk about monster movies. Oh, that'd be awesome. And not Dracula. I'm thinking more like creature features. Yeah, that sounds good, man. Bigfoots, again. And Things that go bump in the night. <laughs> and slurp. <laughs> Sharks and... The fucking host, because that movie's awesome. <laughs> the host. <laughs> I'll have to watch it. <laughs> All right. All right. See ya.